Welcome to the Deep Dive. Great to be here. So today we're uh, we're diving into the world of computer science education, specifically looking at an educator named Zach Zafar Ali Khan. Right. And we've got some interesting material, a YouTube interview transcript, which is quite revealing, and also a piece describing his impact. Exactly. And our mission today really is to unpack what makes Zach's approach tick. You know, what are the core ideas, the methods that have worked so well? Especially in computer science, which, let's face it, changes so fast. How do you keep teaching effective? That's the key question. We want to see what lessons we can draw from his success. Mm. Lessons that go beyond just grades. Well, the first thing that really jumps out, I think, is how personal this is for him. It's not just a career. Oh, how so? He talks about his own teachers, people he calls surrogate parental figures, and how they had this lifelong impact on him. That seems to be a huge motivator. Ah, uh, okay, so that makes sense. It grounds his commitment, doesn't it? Absolutely. You get this sense of a real passion, not just for the subject, but for teaching itself, for making a difference. And that connects to his philosophy, right? This idea of expecting the best from every student, no matter their starting point, skill, ability, even disability. Yes, that's central. And he seems to have understood early on that, um, well, that students learn differently. He mentions, True learning requires many different types of knowledge. Which probably explains why he wasn't stuck on just one teaching method. He adapted. Precisely. That adaptability looks like a big part of it. Which leads us neatly into the flipped classroom idea. He started this way back, like 2007, 2008. Yeah, pretty early adopter. Really ahead of the curve. And it started simple, didn't it? Like, just emailing notes. Uh-huh. Email first. Then it evolved into a proper website. You know, notes past papers, those exam questions grouped by topic assignments. And recording video lectures, a whole package. It shows that continuous drive to make things accessible, I think. And it feels like the tech wasn't just for show. It grew out of need, right? Like solving the problem of getting notes out or making lecture content reviewable. Exactly. Necessity driving the innovation, not just grabbing the latest gadget. And recording all the lectures, slides included. That's a serious commitment to letting students learn at their own pace. Definitely. You can review it whenever you need. Pause. Rewind. Super useful. But the website and videos, they're just one piece of the puzzle, aren't they? This discussion group sounds like it became massive. Oh, yeah. He calls it the heart of the whole technological environment. Thousands of members, apparently. Even teachers from, what, 15 or 16 countries. Wow. So it's more than just Q&A. It's a whole community. Absolutely. It creates this constant loop, doesn't it? Students prep beforehand, ask questions in the group, get quick answers from Zach or others. So learning isn't just stuck in the classroom schedule, it's ongoing. Right. It tackles that feedback bottleneck. You get help when you need it, not just during class time. Okay. And then there are the Zachathons. I mean, eight to 10 hour computer science classes. That sounds oh. intense. Intense is probably the word, but the logic behind it seems solid. What's the thinking there? Well, the idea is that focused revision, with him guiding, is more effective than students just trying to revise alone at home the day before an exam. Hmm, makes sense. Less distraction, maybe. Direct access for questions. Exactly. You cover the whole syllabus, work through past papers, discuss tricky ideas. It's about structured, intensive preparation in a supportive space. Less about cramming, more about consolidating. And apparently, students and parents were really satisfied with this approach. It evolved from just an experiment. Yeah, it seems to have become a really popular, almost signature event. And it's not just about the exams, is it? He puts a lot of emphasis on celebrating success, too. Right. Publicly appreciating the high achievers. There's a strategy there. To motivate those students, obviously, but also maybe inspire others. I think so. And maybe even raise the profile of the subject itself. The sources say computer science became much more popular in Karachi schools, offered widely at A-level now. That suggests a wider impact. So he's not just teaching students, he's kind of shaping the educational environment around him. That's a good way to put it, fostering a whole culture of achievement in that subject. And then he took things online, scaling up his reach, moving the Zachathons online, the Live with Zach channel. Yeah, another example of adapting, using tech to break down those geographical walls. Making his teaching accessible to way more students than just those in his physical classroom. It really democratizes access to that kind of focused teaching, doesn't it? So this description of him as the architect of a new era, it starts to feel pretty accurate. Well, he's been focusing on these Cambridge syllabi O-level IGCS A-level since 96. That's a long time building expertise. And the results are there. 
Top in the world awards for his students. Successful alumni. Right. But it's interesting. He says that grade is just a byproduct. Yeah. What does he mean by that, do you think? I think he's emphasizing that the real win is overcoming challenges, conquering fear, developing resilience. The grade follows from that process. And his classroom as a leadership academy. Simplicity, high standards, belief in potential. That's quite a vision. It suggests it's about more than just coding or algorithms. It's about building character, a mindset. Which maybe explains why he jumped into AI with Ask Z so readily. Could be. While some might see AI as a threat, he saw it as an enhancement. Yeah, creating this AI chatbot, Ask Z, trained on his methods, available 24-7 for Cambridge students. That's forward thinking. It really is. And notice how it aligns perfectly with his philosophy, providing constant support, making expertise accessible. It's like a digital extension of him. It's not just the big things either. His day-to-day -day principles sound quite deliberate. Minimal homework. Focusing that learning energy in the classroom. Maximum learning when he's there. Explaining complex stuff with simple analogies. Keeping standards high, but also showing compassion. It paints a picture of someone very intentional about how he teaches, not just what he teaches. And that focus on making students life-ready, resilience, creative thinking, professionalism, that goes way beyond the syllabus. Absolutely. And using AI tools early on, like those personalized quizzes or the intelligent tracing exercises. What are those tracing exercises again? As I understand it, they're AI tools that basically watch how a student solves a problem, like tracing code execution. And they can pinpoint exactly where the student's logic goes wrong. Real-time diagnostics. Wow, okay. That's pretty sophisticated. But again, notice his view. AI is an ally, not my replacement. Right. It frees him up for the human stuff, the mentoring, the encouragement, the emotional labor, as the source puts it. Exactly. Letting technology handle some tasks so we can focus on the parts only a human teacher can do effectively. So his influence keeps growing. The website, cswithzach.com, consulting, talking about AI ethics. He's clearly no. not standing still. No, definitely not. And that's self-description. Lifelong student first, a teacher second, a dreamer always. That kind of sums it up, doesn't it? It does. And the student testimonials really underscore the impact he's had. It brings it all back to that personal connection you mentioned at the start. And really, it does come full circle. Yeah. What stands out is this blends, this synergy between passion, smart tech use, yeah. and just deep commitment to the students. Yeah. The aha moments for me are definitely seeing how that flipped classroom plus the online community created something really dynamic. And the sheer focus of these Zacathons, you can see why they'd work. They target that pre-exam period so effectively, building confidence and knowledge right when it's needed most. So wrapping this up, it leaves us with a pretty big question, I think. For anyone involved in teaching, training, or even just sharing knowledge in any field, mm. how can we take these principles from Zach embracing technology, yes, but always keeping that human-centered core and apply them? How do you find that balance between innovation and the fundamental things that make learning stick and truly matter? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Balancing the tech with the touch. Definitely something for all of us to think about. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us.